guys, I do believe the next four weeks is going to be so beautiful. It's important. I think you pay attention to this because where God is leading, I'm not sure I will be able to share everything God has told me or shared with me, impressed on my heart. And uh, I, I, it will take some weeks. So I need your grace and your patience in this. I do have some one-liners. It goes like this. Um, <clears throat> Have you heard about a new restaurant called Karma? There is no menu. You get what you deserve. <laughs> What's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. The adjective for metal is metallic, but not so for iron, which is so ironic. Anyway, did you hear about the claustrophobic astronaut? Astronaut? He just needed a little space. Okay, this is the last one. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. I know, it's, it's dry. Lift up your Bibles and you say this with me, Lord Jesus, I want to be influenced today. Holy Spirit, that we are here not to be informed we are here to be transformed and i pray that you will give us a sensitive mind a sensitive spirit to hear from you to really know where you are taking us as a church you told us that i will build my church and i pray we are not going to resist your work i pray that you will build your church in us we thank you and we ask this all in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, I'm not going to allow Peter to put it on the top, anything. Just, I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, I think last year, when we came back from Spain in 2021, I felt the word of the Lord very strongly. He said to us, there are things that we've been doing as a church we need to change. And I remember the Lord spoke to me when I was in Spain in 2020 December I think it was 16th of December around 10 30 in the evening I was doing some prayer and and I just had this beautiful vision from the Lord and I and I saw this picture of flames coming everywhere in the city and it's all small small flames like candles and it's spreading everywhere and I said Lord what is this and I said the Lord said this is gonna be the new season but I'm gonna raise my church not just in buildings, it's going to be in families. And I was so pumped up. And I started jotting it down. I will share that. I'm not sure today I will share it in detail. It may be to next week. So that's why I want you to either come every week, or if you can't come, if you are traveling or on call, at least listen to this because it's very important where we are going. So I did come back with that sense of vision. And um, I remember sharing this in uh, last year and it didn't go well maybe my timing didn't dry was not right but then i got compromised and i started saying maybe uh, this is too radical if we go like this maybe we should uh, uh, make it easier palatable for people and what happened during that time i got burnt out and uh, you all know that i had to leave the country and to be fixed uh, spiritually emotionally uh, so that i can come back again so every time I close my eyes, every time when I even open my eyes and this vision, it does not subside. I thought it'll over the time, it'll subside. Maybe I thought, maybe it's one of those good ideas, you know, maybe it's one of those days that you have this idea and it just, it's, it's a nice idea and it'll just, but every time when I pray for the city of Vellur, every time when I close my eyes, even in the night time, sometimes I cannot sleep, it's just so clear and it almost disturbs you in the point where, you know, like Abdul Kalam says, vision is not something you get uh, during the night when you dream. It's when you and when you are awake, you are still, it's so visible that you can't, you know, get past that. And, and that's the thing. And it's keep on growing and growing. And I felt the Lord was saying, take this month, talk about it, invite people into this journey that where he is leading. It's not I am leading. He is leading the church called Papa's house. Now, this is the first part of the vision. It's up in the screen. And, uh, and the title goes like this. Jesus said, 
Jesus never said, go to church. Jesus never said, go to church. He th throughout this gospels and he throughout the apostles and the books of the apostles and even the acts you read, you will never find a statement that Jesus said, go to church. He never said that. In fact, this is what he says. Let's read Matthew 16, verse 30 to 20. And it goes like this. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, and this is a very pagan place, okay? And this is a place where lots of gods are there. And one of the gods is called the Pan God. It's a god of mixture between a, a goat and a man. It's a very erotic god. God and and in the midst of all this God that is standing up there and people are going and paying all this Diana which is a God of fertility and all those things are happening around these places he asked his disciples by the way disciples he didn't call them Christians he didn't call them believers he called them disciples students he says what do people say the son of man is and they replied some say John the Baptist Others say Elijah. Still others say Jeremiah are one of those prophets. And that's something we all agree on. Jesus is not a bad guy among the Hindus. The Hindus like him. They like him as a guru. They like him as somebody who brought moral values. They like what the followers of Jesus did in the nation, school, education, hospital, all those things. They love that. They have no problem in accepting Jesus as one of those good guys. No Hindu have ever come to me and said, I hate Jesus. Never. I don't know. Have you ever come across? No Muslim. They take him as one of their prophets. But look what is going on. Look. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? This whole next four weeks hangs on this one little phrase that's going to come out now. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this is the most stunning response Jesus gives, verse 17. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Jonah means dove. Simon means one who hears. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. And then he makes this bold statement that nobody ever heard before. Okay, we are sitting inside the church. I'm a third generation Christian. How many of you are first generation Christian? Okay, Patrick is the second generation Christian. Third generation Christian. I'm the third, fourth generation Christian. Here, fifth generation Christian. Yes, Lydia, Amirta. Fifth generation. So Forest Church is like, ugh. what is IPC? or CPM, or Baptist. For us, it's like this, okay? For us, it's no, it doesn't, it doesn't make a, like a question mark. But this is what he says. I tell you that you are Peter on this rock, these five words, we have to memorize this, five words. I will build my church. Come on, look at someone and say, I will build my church. Come on, one more time. This is going to be the ringtone for the next four weeks. I will build my church. Okay? Come on. It seems like you guys fasting this Sunday morning. Eh? Are you guys one of those guys fasting Sundays? I, I fast on Sundays. So, anyway. Okay, Sharon. Let's do one more time. I will build my church. And look at this. And the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. And then he goes on and says... I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was Messiah. Now, this is a very interesting statement by Jesus. He asked among the gods. There are so many big, big gods. Monstrous. And he's walking there. Son of man. Carpenter's son. Not, not doctor son, carpenter son. He's not having, you know, big name. You know. And uh, he's just walking down there, son of man. He's walking with his 12 bozos and he's asking them, hey guys, what do you think I am? And one guy says, John the Baptist, Jeremiah, 
other prophet. And then what do you think? You, Peter, what do you think? He's like, you are the Messiah, son of God. And Jesus pauses and he looks at him and says, I think God spoke to you. And then he gives a statement. And he says, I will build my church. And by the way, people have heard the word church before under the religious context. Do you know that? Church is not a religious context. Church was never called. He, he didn't say, I will build my new synagogue because that was portable. Because during the 400 years of silence, something came out, it's called Judaism. And the Judaism invented something called Pharisees, Sadducees, all the seas that you can seize. You know? And they invented that. You understand? So, the Judaism have a synagogue and they have even created from the 10 laws they have turned into 613 laws out of which 100 laws are about women how they can be excluded and one of the rabbi ulcer his name i don't know maybe he had ulcer but he said <laughs> and he said i would rather burn my torah than allowing women to enter into the synagogue and this is how it was okay and if the women should come along with the lepers, they should come late and leave earlier. They can only stay on the outer court. We talked about the tabernacle. Okay. Here was Jesus. The moment Peter got the revelation that Jesus is the son of God, he gives them a beautiful statement. I will build my church. Now, what is church? We know church is a denomination. We know church is a building. We know church is something that we do on Sundays. We know church is something that Christians come together to feel good or to be entertained, equipped or empowered. We know that. But what is a church? Church in Greek means, uh, maybe it's up there, ecclesia, meaning a political assembly of citizens. That's what church means. A political assembly of citizens. Here was Jesus saying, Peter, you got the revelation. I will build my church. Peter is like, wow, I thought you are a religious guru. Now you are telling me a name that I have never heard in a, in a religious setting, systematic religion. I am hearing a name that is outside the religious setting. What is that? A political gathering. The word ek, it has got two words. Ek means to call forth. That's why when Pilate looked at Jesus, he says, Eke homo. Behold the man. Ek lesha. Ek means to call forth a people separated. You understand? Ek lesha. Now, it's, that's, listen to what, it's not up on the screen. Listen to what this Greek English lexicon says about the church. It means a legislative assembly or a selected ones. It is not a religious term at all. It is a political and governmental term that is used many times in classical Greek for a group of people who have been summoned and gathered together to govern the affairs of a city. For Jesus to use this term means he is giving the keys of the governmental authority in his kingdom to the church. I mean... This must have made Peter go nuts because he's giving them completely a different pill because they thought Jesus is a religious guru. They thought Jesus is some kind of a new, a new prophet or a new Pharisee, kind of a modern Pharisee because Jesus also taught in, this, in, the, in the temple, right? So for them it's like maybe he's going to do some modification in the synagogue, modification in the Judaism, modification in some religious lifestyle. Here was Jesus completely wiping all the memories of the, what they could think of church and he's saying, I'm going to call you and I'm going to build my church, which basically means I've called you and I've given you the keys of a kingdom that is not here so that you can govern this city with my governmental authority. Now this, tell me now, is this sounds anything religious? This doesn't sound religious. But now what we do in a church? Everything we do is a religious thing. We come together, we pray, we sing, 
somebody gives a sermon, there is an offering, we talk, we go. Buildings are closed, another Sunday we comes, we come again. Is that what church? That's not the intention of the church. And I wrote down here, I will build my church, Matthew 16, 18. Okay? Look at this. There are five things. I, it is Christ's church, not man's. If you are taking notes, take notes. If you are not taking notes, take notes or a screenshot. Will, it is Christ's purpose, not man's. Build, it is Christ's work, not man's. It is my, it is Christ's position, not man's. Church, it is Christ's bride, not man's. Can you imagine this? You look at this. Nothing is ours. It is Christ. Christ's church, Christ's purpose, Christ's work, Christ's position, Christ's bride. Now look at our church. Now when I talk about church, in this context, I am talking about the institution of church. What do we do now? We ask immediately, are you a Christian? What is the next question we ask? What denomination? Yes or no? And based on the denominations, we have in our mental grade, we give them a grade. Yes or no? If we, Come on, sure. Thank you. One person, honest person. What church? I'm going to CSI. Oh. Hmm. Huh? One pastor said, CSI, CNI means criminals of South India and criminals of North India. Huh? <laughs> it's not true. Huh? And then even in the Pentecostal, there are higher hierarchies. Huh? CPM, IPC, Share and Assembly. Hmm? And then you have AG, uh, strict Baptist, relaxed Baptist. It's true. I was, in jo I was in Brazil. The pastor took me. Today you're going to a strict Baptist. Church. What does that mean? The women are going to be wearing below the knees their skirt. And then the evening service he took me to a normal Baptist. What is that? Above the knees skirt. Can you <laughs> I mean, I'm, it looks funny but that's the reality. We are, church has turned out into something external modification and we grade people based on their affiliation to the denomination. It's Christ's church, Christ's purpose. What's happening in our modern day church? Not Christ's purpose. It's man's purpose is happening. It's Christ's work. It's not man's work. It's Christ's possession. Today we are so, it's, it's, I mean, if somebody comes from a different denomination, then not yours, and yet there is a wisdom in that person, we don't take it. Why? Because how come a Baptist can have that revelation? How come a Methodist can have that revelation? We are supposed to, you know? Anyway, it is Christ's bride. Jesus never started a religion. Jesus never endorsed a religion. Jesus did not, is not a religious guru. Jesus never said, you need to be part of a religion. Jesus never acknowledged in order to follow him, you have to have a religious affiliation. Jesus never preached and practiced religion. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus was against religion. Look at Matthew 23. Jesus preached and practiced a kingdom. Matthew 15, 9 and 10. Jesus invited everyone to be part of the kingdom of God. Luke 14, 15 to 24. We don't have time to go in the details. Please take down this or take a picture, I beg you. Do a study on this. It's very, very important. Jesus never preached grace. He demonstrated that he is grace. So what happened to the church? We need to talk about it. Because if we have to share about the vision where God is taking us, we need to know what's happened to the church. Because I am not happy in the way the church is running. I'm not happy. I don't know whether you are happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy that I come on Sunday morning and we prepare Saturday night some songs. Or today, like Joanna said, I came back late, Sunshine night, so we'll do some practice on 8 o'clock. So 8 o'clock you come, Eunice woke up a little early, she did I have a quiet time, you know, and prepared 8 o'clock. We did the service, beautiful. And then, we are gone. You know, it's 10.49. You are saying, 11.30, out. Maybe 11.45, I have chai. 12 o'clock, the gates are shut. And then again, you come next Sunday. I'm not happy. I, 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 for me, it's like, that's not church. 
the son of god has to pay the most cruel death on the cross for us for one and a half hours to feel good and play kumbaya and then go back i mean it's is something morally doesn't sit well i mean imagine imagine that imagine this we build for the church alone this will cost right now as of now to build this cost more than 80 lakhs to just build this imagine you put 80 lakhs in a building of 4500 square feet to build and we use it one and a half hours every sunday and then you close it is it a good stewardship you paid your hard earned you work your butts off you pay your tithes and offerings into this church and i take it build a massive church and i close it monday to saturday sunday open up for 2 hours for you to feel good is that what the lord meant for church i mean let's ask i mean i'm asking this question to myself i'm asking to my family i i don't think so i mean something wrong something along the way got muddied and i wrote down here what happened to the church it has become sick we have a sick church and again when i say church i'm not talking about a denomination i'm not asking you to point which church which church sick brother yeah 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 two years ago when i was doing bond i went to that church that church is a sick church i'm not asking you to think that way i'm asking you to think the church is you and me have become sick we are we are sick people religion got in and got muddied instead of church being active and vocal it has become inactive and politically correct today what is happening in church we have groupism in the church come on church we have groupism we have casteism i was talking to my brother on the other day i was telling i will not mention it we are recording there are there is a big church here in vellore it's three different places same denomination three caste people go in the different different places and and that's for me it's like we worship i lived in south africa as a missionary there is one church denomination for three people groups blacks go to this one same denomination blacks go to one place whites go to another place the colors which is us indians and you know black and white we go to another place same god all of them saying we are from the same denomination they don't even have a same yearly convention why that is sick isn't it something has happened we are we become groupism racism regionalism something has changed so let's look what happened gk trusted and used to say and i quote we do not want the church that will move with the world we want the church that will move the world let's read how the early church lived maybe we'll get some clue acts chapter 2 42 to 47 if you can do one favor for yourself and for us the next four weeks if you are doing quiet time if you are continually reading something do it but if you if you are if you want to start a new book maybe from now on to the next end of this 30th of september if you can read acts it's only 28 chapters are there if you can read one chapter a day you know we are now four maybe you can do one or two the next then this month just read a book of acts please that's my request for you in your quiet time just read book of acts okay then you will see what we are talking about it will give you a little bit of understanding acts chapter 2 42 to 47 it says they who is they the church devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone who is that everyone the church was filled with a and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles all all this is the church all the believers were together and had everything in common they who is that the church sold property and possession and give it to anyone who had need i'm not asking you for your property don't worry oh that's the vision pastor is getting there no i'm not getting there okay every day they who is that the church continue to meet together in temple courts they the church broke bread in their homes the church's homes and ate together with gladness and sincere hearts praising god enjoying the favor of all the people the lord added to their number on every sundays those who are being saved is it says on every sundays what it says there come on church daily today to bring a new person on one sunday morning we have to do so many gimmicks we have to say pizza night if it is young people we want to have barbecue free transportation 
cool drinks will be provided refreshment will be provided entrance free refreshment will be provided transportation available when was the early church did that refreshment free there is you know how the early church i i i did a little bit of a research very little tiny the early church will have bouncers in front of them do you know bouncers where do you find bouncers now come on holy people open your mouth talk about your past where you will find bouncers now in the pub you will have bouncers in the early church because oh, to be a christian is it's a sect it's a cult it's it's not something that you proudly say i am a christian no 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 it's it's a dangerous thing so they will have bouncers in the front they really want to know who you are getting in because sometimes spies will come in from the roman empire and they can say these people are there and then executed the next is you're going to meet in the pearly gates so they will have bouncers and the bouncers will ask questions have you ever had to face a bouncer before in your life thank you joanna i was working in amsterdam i need to face a bouncer they will never trust me in i don't know why because the indians don't have money or whatever the, the bouncers will always ask me a question why are you coming here you have to meet the bouncers and if if you mess up with the bouncer you can go in and enjoy the party yes or no oh lord i'm speaking to the holy people i need them to come down a little bit okay that's how the early church had they had bouncers and you had a pass through that they met together in home secret places they broke bread and they even had signs like you know the fish sign i mean that's a sign it was a sign they used to code language today we put it on the back of the bumper sticker and we say hi oh, i'm a christian i have a fish sticker one guy in front of me he says says my presence shall go before you and in behind me our car old qualis jesus loves india in front there is a auto coming om sri raghavendra namaha okay this auto this happened in cmc exit gate okay this real story i'm not adding any masala nothing trying to be evangelistic or anything you know it's very true this om sri raghavendra namaha hit my presence shall go before lightly like a little feather touch this guy came out of the home my presence shall come before you came out he started speaking in tongues which is not the tongues that you will hear in the church it was a different kind of tongues it was a human language but he calling his grandmother grandfather great great grandmother he was calling is is extending his blessings towards the fourth fifth generations i am sitting here listening to this because it's a language that a man can understand tamil local language and i am listening and i wanted to cover it my my car says what jesus loves india but this guy is speaking in tongues there's nothing related to it's a real story my brothers and sisters we have drifted let's face it if we don't realize if you go to your doctor and the doctor says you are seriously ill and you go to your doctor and the doctor says nothing no problem eat just two idlis fine you will be fine i don't want to hurt you i don't want to hurt your feelings you want to go to the doctor again you want to go to your doctor who can bluntly say man you know this girl in 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 in, in, in america they have tanning machines you know that here we we take 2 kilos fair and lovely and we take shower but there they go tanning missions so this girl wants to go on a beach island bahamas this is true it's part of the vision i'm coming there okay don't get distracted she wants to be tanned she wants to show that she is tanned not pale you know and so she went and booked herself on a tanning mission they go on a tanning bed cover it to steam it up so they, you can do only like 8 minutes per day that's it but she was in a rush she booked in five six different tanning places in the city and she got tanned this is a real story yeah and she became really tanned you know now she's dark and beautiful she goes home and her husband sleeping next to her her husband says honey i smell like little burnt what's going on it's a real story and she checked out in the doctor the next week because she was not feeling well throwing up and they did an examination did some blood work her body parts got burnt internally and they were given 40 days for her to live it's true 
Why am I telling you this? Sometimes we think, I have done church, I am fine. I'm, 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 let me continue my work. But we have a sick church. And this is what the early church did. If you read this, if you read this book of Acts, you will find out. This, I have shared this with you last year, previous year. I'm going to quote quickly. The eight pillars of the early church. This was the foundation of the early church. It's up there. We're going to go quickly. The first one is worship. When Joanna and Eunice and the brothers led this morning, you think the worship is finished? Worship was never an event. It was a lifestyle. And even we, we, we are changing our vocabulary. You know, when Eunice will say, uh, uh, you, she will correct herself. Let's do worship practice. Like, how can you practice worship? I mean, we, we say that. And then she will say, let's, let's practice singing. How to worship the Lord. You know, to give them a sweet aroma. Because you can't practice worship. Like, how do you practice worship? Worship is your lifestyle. I mean, it's not behavioral modification. It's heart transformation. Event of lifestyle, sweet aroma, a deep desire to worship. Word helps us to live a lifestyle of supernatural. Acts, all the scriptures, please write it down. That's why you have to read book of Acts. They had a commitment to know and honor the word of the Lord in their lives. The word of the Lord today is not honored. It's kept in corner. And if you watch any crazy movie, I remember after watching my first scary movie, the word became very dear to me. I put it next to my pillow and slept. Anybody watched movie, scary movie and put pillow next to pillow? Only Emmanuel. Yeah, two, three. Thank you. Some, four, five. Yes. I once put King James Version on my right, New Living International on the right, left. Because in case the Satan does not understand this, you'll understand the easy version. You feels good, you know, at least because it died down, something, you know. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Look at this. Word. The word was a lifestyle of supernatural. They based their life on the word of the Lord. Communion. A deeper revelation of the cross. They remembered whenever they gathered. Today communion become a ritual thing. They will say, oh, this is what they, <laughs> they say. Okay, I found a girl, but she's not part of our church. Okay, her name is Kamachi. Okay, let's baptize her, give her new name, Jasmine. It's a Christian name. Okay, let's give her new name, new communion, new baptism. Now she's part of the family. You think that's, that's church? The church is like adding people, converting people. I mean, for me, look at this. They had a deeper revelation of the cross. So every time when you break the bread, give me one of this, please. Every time when you take this, they were like, wow, Jesus, I was supposed to be here. I was supposed to be beaten. My blood has to be shed because I deserve not to live. But you took my place. A deeper revelation of the cross. Number four, prayer. A constant communion with God. They were men and women of prayer. Today is the boring subject among Christians. If I tell prophecy coming, I'm bringing a prophet, people will sign up. Yes or no? The, there is a prophet who's going to come to Vellur. He's going to tell your passport number. People will sign up. Why you need a passport number to be told by a guy? Open your eyes and look at the passport. You'll find the number. The, the crazy thing. No money is coming out of the wallet. No work. Money will automatically come. You know, one guy said, oh, he turns the water into white wine. I'm going to go there. Already the Lord delivered you from Tasmak. Why you need white wine? We go for that. We go for those external things. But when we say, guys, let's humble ourselves and pray. During the first wave, I don't know, Sharon, Brother Sunil and others, the brothers know, we had nothing. Everything was shut down. What we did? We did start praying on Zoom. People were coming and crying out to the Lord. You are praying for your family in Kwaimbutu. Remember the days and all? And I was so blessed to see People will come back from work 8 o'clock and they will straight logging. Why? Because they want to be known as men and women of prayer. Look at fasting. What is the fasting today? The churches have overeaten and they have become a place where we are, we become obese. There is a restaurant in America called Heart Attack. It's in Las Vegas. They fry 
in pig's lard the french fries yes the starting calorie is anywhere the starting calorie is 2000 calories and they go up to 20000 calories okay and all the nurses uh, all the waiters are dressed like nurses with stethoscope and everything there is a real ambulance waiting outside okay it's true story you can google it and find out and if you are more than 175 kilos you can eat for free okay and there is absolutely absolutely nothing and you, when you go in you you are weird you will be given an hospital gown everything looks like a clinic set up and they bring you stacks and stacks of food there the church has become like that a sick obese church we know all the famous quotes from famous people we know all the songs from the different bands oh elevation i know that song elevation oh that's a hill song oh that's a bethel oh that's oh that's chris tomlin oh that oh yeah oh that pastor oh amazing oh yeah mike what is that my what is that futuric whatever futuric uh, what's his name stephen futur oh bill johnson oh yeah 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 oh yeah i know this quote i know oh yeah yeah it's there i watched it but still we are a sick church we don't know we don't know how to evangelize we don't know when a muslim guy comes and conference tell me gospel why i have to choose jesus the church don't have an answer when a hindu guy comes and says why i have to leave 330 million gods logically is asking more is better why you want me to forsake the more to choose the less what do you want to say i asked one lady why you come to church because that church has cemetery brother my grandfather was there buried my great grandfather was buried all family we have confirmed cemetery can you imagine that you go to a church you are part of a denomination so that one day this mortal body will be put is that why you go to church i mean come on let's face it look at this fasting not get what they want in their life but a sign of humility to understand the heart and mind of god they fasted regularly i encourage you please at least fast one day a week how many of you fast at least one day a week as so one two please put your hand it's it's a good sign it's like it's a role model one day a week i'm not talking about from 10 pm to 6 am in the morning that's not your fasting okay and fasting without prayer is basically hunger strike and if you do hunger strike god is going to look at you and say you're going to come home sooner than i thought son it's important they fasted regularly why they fasted not to twist god's arm not to get some agenda from them one guy said anna she said no to me three days fasting anna i said what's that mean three days fasting the she is going to say yes anna three days later she did not say no she said bhaiya this guy started growing beard fasting is not working you think you think in three days you can convince a god to tell a girl oh mere jaan come on this for me that's why you come to church that's why you read bible i mean come on there must be something deeper than that i'm bored of that kind of lifestyle for me i would rather not call myself a christian i would do something else sorry you know look at this they fasted regularly they humbled themselves to know the mind of god and then and, and sixth one giving because he gave himself first generosity was all time high and i i thank god for this small congregation you guys been faithful in your finances so beautiful you know and, and 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 i appreciate that but this was not just to give so that you can get you give because god has given you you give because he owns everything of your life you owe all your life to him evangelism seventh one Christian living is experience and expression that's my favorite quote from E Stanley Jones look at this verses we don't have time to look at all those things eagerly to share the gospel evangelism they eagerly they looked at any soul they will find an opportunity yesterday we were in the uh, we went to prithivs uh, and himas baby to pray and also to sandeep and uh, 
uh, Sumir baby to pray Saturday and also vaccination we did for our kids and it was quite expensive for all the three kids cost 10,000 rupees and it's it's logically doesn't make sense you pay somebody 10,000 and in front of you they hurt your guys your kids <laughs> I'm sitting there and say oh, thank you thank you for hurting my kid I mean doesn't make sense logically but you know you got to do sometimes you know sometimes God puts you through pain not because he's a sadist you know he he sees a future in behind that amen I mean I just could not imagine to see they I was holding two stirrers they are big I mean they eat double meals I guess I mean so they are with their injections they are waiting there whole whole leg whole leg pierced it my poor four months old crying paid 7000 rupees for that I was thinking man that girl only it takes Jesus to forgive a father like that who can inflict pain so we were standing there came out I was thirsty I don't want to drink masa or coca cola there's a guy fruit tender coconut he was and he takes the coconut he shaves like one slice just falls just and I was like man this guy is a little bit strange you know I called him Thambi what's your name he says his name is Annamala I said Thambi the way you are cutting it sound it looks like professional and it's stylish and he said Anna I used to have a YouTube channel 22,000 followers I was on TikTok because you could see those things you know he was slicing one slice even that the top where you poke it even comes out and then he puts a straw gently I was like and he said but everything came to stand still Anna because every time when I get up I have a severe pain here I went to the doctors they told it's in your gene you will always live with your pain like this and finally one doctor in CMC he took he mentioned some name I forgot he said he took him and he gave him medicine and it was his, he lost his hair strength and everything he became even worst and uh, I gave up everything I do have a desire to in, to motivate people with whatever you do so I said to him after eating drinking couple of uh, tender coconut it was right after we met Sharon you know and I hold his hand I said stretch your hand give it to me I was sitting in the car I'm gonna pray for you Jesus is gonna bring healing I mean he put his hand over the windows like this and now please pray for me and the Holy Spirit started manifesting his presence over him it's like thank you so much I feel much better what is church on Sunday morning we have a beautiful time or we go out and say God I want to know the mind of yours for the people here in the city they are hurting they're disappointed they have no hope how can I bring the kingdom solution Ecclesia I will build my church look at this other one discipleship to be a better citizen a representative of the kingdom a kingdom citizen devoted and submitted to discipleship this is how the early church lived if you look at this please don't need to say to me where are we take us we don't need to point any other church where are we are we doing this every day every moment I, I'm I said to my brother Sunil on the other day we we're having coffee I said you know what I'm tempted to move to main road to rent a place there you know somewhere close to Bagayam if I move there rent a place 20,000 rent and we move there you think we will have only this many people you tell me we'll have more and we put a nice show we say refreshments provided free transportation we put a nice we'll have some you know with 15 20 people we get an offering by the way every month we get 40 to 45,000 rupees monthly rent monthly offerings from this congregation and your offerings helps the staff little bit they get support and to serve the homeless to feed the homeless imagine you you gather 200 300 people you'll get some few lakhs we don't take any salary it's a good business right tell me please I'm sharing openly it's a good business pastor no need to drive 2014 car second hand Benz I can buy right oh Yes or no? Huh? Second hand Benz, E class, not C E. Come on. 
I said, brother, I can do that. But in my heart, I feel like it's a priesthood of all believers. Everyone needs to be the church that Christ's bride is supposed to be. For that, the current program, what we have, is not helping. We've got to change. That's what we will be talking this next four weeks and making some radical decisions. And probably some of you like it, some of you don't like it. But look at the next one. They were constant in expectation of the supernatural. Supernatural was their new normal. Read those scriptures. Constant expectation that they would, they would take Acts 19.12. I set up my alarm and I pray. They would take the aprons, aprons and handkerchiefs of Paul and they would lay it on the sick people. And they will get healed. Constant expect. What is the constant expectation of the supernatural in day to day's church today? Nothing. If it happens, it happens. Glory. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But there's no expectation. God is going to heal. It's not an expectation. Because we have bought into this lie that says it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Look at this. And this is the last one. I put the main important one, the last one. They were bold and ready to face persecution and joy of the Lord was their strength. Today, the church don't want to be persecuted. Look at this verse. Can we read one verse, Acts chapter 4? Turn with me, Acts chapter 4. I'll just give you a little bit of a taste. Are we guys doing okay? Yes? Okay. Acts chapter 4, 29. Look at this verse. Okay. Acts 29. Where is that? Ah. It says, Now... This is what they are praying after they got beaten up. Hmm. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness and stretch out your hand to heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting were shaken. Now the people are shaking, place are not shaking. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Can you imagine this? After threat, they didn't come and say, Guys, we got to be politically correct. From now onwards, don't say Jesus is the only Lord. Just talk about Jesus loves you. He scratches your back when you eat. He feels he's, he's always, he's never going to reject you. No matter what, one-sided gospel. We are a politically correct gospel we are preaching. Now they are saying, Consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Now turn with me to one more verse. Next chapter, chapter 5, verse 41. This verse, look at this one. This is even freaky. The apostles left the Sanhedrin. Okay, Sanhedrin is the group of Jewish people sect. It's the Pharisee group, okay? The synagogue council. Rejoicing because they have been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. Can you imagine that? Somebody says, you Christian, you know, maybe the persecution is different today. Maybe you, you are dating somebody and you are saying, I am keeping myself pure and they are ridiculousing you. And you are saying, Lord, I am counted worthy for suffering disgrace for your name. Or you are saying, I don't want to be rejected. I want to, you know, Every single is mingling, so let me also mingle. Look at this next verse. Day after day, in the temple courts, and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. But this is where the church was. What has happened now, I, had a, I wanted to show you a little demonstration. If Patrick and uh, Tambi, if you can come, I want you to please... Uh, pay attention to this. I'm going to wrap it up maybe in another five minutes. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of people start taking vitamins. Yes or no? Uh, supplements. My mother-in-law, mother-in-law, she loves selling. She, her business actually grew during the pandemic because people wanting to have vitamins. And that too, organic, all-natural vitamins. You know? So she saw, she, she didn't sell it to us, she gave it. And I love taking, can you put it here? If you can, under, you have to hold it from the down. It's going to fall. Okay. So, and uh, she started selling everywhere. And, you know, there is zinc. 
and this is something called propolis it's a natural honey bee i'm not promoting okay you don't have to buy it from me but it's it helps your immune system and and this one is uh, this is a agra frito something to fix your hair you know and this one is maca which is uh, to help you to get iron deficiency and this is this is a mixture of zinc and calcium c and uh, and this is d3 and and then this is propolis adults and this is a goli gummy bars and this some samples i'm not bringing the whole closet i'm not opening it up just a few of them and she sells this she's you take it during this and people will be taking like during when they have corona even in states they will take almost like a scoop of medicine inside to make sure they they are better now bear with me okay on the other side i have here some bananas some nice tomato uh, tomato chutney sambar vada have you seen here two idlis dosa a vada okay now you are saying faster i am fasting today you are showing this you have here nice here your coconut chutney peanut chutney sambar lentils you have banana now this is what happens we come to church we take the supplements we eat the supplements we say wow if i take you know one guy told me when i was having covid in states if you can take 5 mg of vitamin c every day you know you may go to restroom few times but it will boost up your immune system you know and they st- i mean they will they have tons of things i mean you can take supplements supplements are okay but it's not your real meal church is like this on sunday it's like supplements you come get boosted get encouraged but you got to go home and eat your regular meal a balanced meal every day you got to eat i mean i eat oats i'm a oats guy you know and i i don't i this is one of those exceptional days i eat dosa probably i'll finish it after church i don't know it looks very appetizing <laughs> you know so dosa idli you have to take your fruits you have to have a right amount of you know a balanced diet many people they come to church on sunday they take their vitamins and throughout the week no personal quiet time no personal reading of the bible no personal prayer no evangelism no mutual connection with the pastor or with any leaders to discipleship nothing come again imagine you don't eat this you only eat this come on you are medical professionals tell me help me out tell me what will happen you don't eat this only eat this are you going to be healthy please help me out no and that's what happened today to the church the church bought into your lie that if i attend a church on sunday do little things like this get something write some notes do some stuff then after that i don't need we have a sick members in the church i wrote down these four questions up there thank you brothers it let it stay here four questions i have wrote down here i want you to write it down i want you to think about these four questions honestly let us examine ourselves where are we now what areas are we doing well what are the areas we really need to challenge ourselves how can we get there what should we stop doing and what we need to start doing as our next step are we ready to be challenged are we ready to be challenged because if you don't diagnose it your problem you are actually hurting yourself you just say it's okay it's not a big deal it's not a big deal no it is a big deal i am seeing a church is growing in buildings you know when i when, god willing next week we will talk about that i want you to pray about this take go back to that slide one more slide back go back go this go back just go back yeah keep it like this this is the church this is how it should be where are we where are you where are me where i am where are we as a family do we grow in this or we just come sunday just entertain beautifully here are some announcements 
If you have missed any of our sermons, you can watch them by logging in on Papa's House through YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Belor. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions and led by the Spirit and you feel that Papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with Christ, you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering. We would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reaps a good reward from God. You can find the details of the bank accounts and Google Pay should you decide to send in your offering to us. We will intimate to you once we have received it. Also, here are the links on how you can reach and follow us.